All right, well, good morning, everybody. You know, I, I know what it's like to be the announcements guy. And my name is Joel, by the way, I'm one of those pastors here. And the slide that you wanted to go up didn't go up. Notice that this morning? I think we have it, though. I believe. I hope. There you go, all right? So there, there you go. I want to make sure we make this right. Bower Creek Church coming 2022. You know, we are so thankful at Lakeside. You know, we've seen in the past God plant a church, New City, right? Amen? And we know that we are, we're part of a group called Engaged Network of Gospel-Centered Churches planting other Gospel-Centered Churches, and Bower Creek Church will be the next, Lord willing, the next church in the Engaged Network here in 2022. So there's their new logo. Wanted to make sure you got that uh, for you this morning. Well, we've come to the end of the Christmas season uh, this year. And what we've covered so far this Christmas season is we've covered these things. We, we've looked at the Savior's plan. If you remember all the way back at the beginning of December, December we talked about the Savior's plan and his sovereignty here at, at Christmas. Uh, we talked about the Savior's parents and Mary and Joseph. We talked about the Savior's presence. And then at Christmas Eve, we were able to talk about the Savior's priority, his heart for each one of us. And today we are going to close off this uh, Christmas season by talking about the Savior's promises. And I don't know about you, but I need a dose of the Savior's promises today. So, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning, Lord. Thank you so much again for how you're working in the Engage Network, how you brought Stephen Moore, Pastor Stephen Moore, to plant a church in Huxley next year. God, thank you for Ballard Creek Church. I pray that you'd bless that, Lord. God, I pray as we just take time out of the busyness of this season, that we would just be still before you and recognize how worthy you are, God. And Lord, thank you for allowing all of us to be here today. Lord, I pray as we look into your word that you would use it in our lives. God, I pray that you would uh, reveal yourself to each one of us through your word and through your spirit. And if there's one or many in this room that has never fully surrendered their life to you and has been rescued by the blood of Christ, Lord, I pray that today would be that day. And Lord, for those of us who have fully surrendered and who have been rescued, God, remind us of the promises today that are all yes in Jesus Christ. Lord, use it to change us so that we go from this place on fire, ready to share Christ with people around us today. We love you. We're looking forward to what you're going to do this morning. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. I have to tell you, December 26th, right? What a day, right? I was talking with my son, I was out with my son a couple weeks ago, my youngest son, and he looked at me, he's like, Dad, the 26th of December has to be the saddest day of the year. And I was like, yeah, I, I see that. I'm preaching that day, by the way, son. Oh, sorry, Dad, sorry, no, no. You know, I kind of get it, though. Don't we get that? Don't we have that kind of feeling on the 26th of, Chris, uh, of December? You know, for me, the kids are done singing their song like we did last week. The, the candlelight Christmas evening is extinguished for another year. And there's still wax everywhere, by the way, if you notice that today. What a blessing that is to be reminded. I love that. I'm thankful for what God, it's just like Christmas, okay? But the anticipation, I'm always reminded of this, the anticipation of Christmas or whatever else, it's always better than the realization, is it not? And then that anticipation's gone, the realization's gone, and real life starts to set in again. And, and however, though, as, as we talk today, as we go into Isaiah chapter 9 today, and we talk about the Savior's promises, the realization of all these promises is far better than the anticipation of them. And, and they will never disappoint us. In fact, they're going to grow. The promises of God, the older I get and the more I've walked with the Lord and the more he's taught me through his word, the more they grow in their sweetness. And I'm just so thankful for the promises of God and what we have in Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to go through the Savior's promises from Isaiah chapter 9. And what I want to do, I just broke this down in three different ways. Uh, we're going to look at the promises in the past. We're going to look at the promises in the present that we have right now, and, and then we're going to look at the promises for the future. 
And what we, as those who have fully surrendered our lives to Christ, what we have to look forward to and the promises that we have in Christ for the future. And so let's dive right into this this morning. I I pray that you will be encouraged by this this morning. I pray that if you haven't come to the realization of, of what Christ has done for you in your life, how he died on the cross for you, that today would be the day you'd fully surrender and be rescued uh, by Christ today. But let's look at, dive into Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 5 to start off with, the promises of the past. And Jonathan just read this, and I want you to put your eyes on it once again and, and listen to these words again. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the later later time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. And so I want to stop there and I just want to show you a little quick picture here, a little map of this area that's talking about the Galilee of the Gentiles or the Galilee of the nations. And this is the area that, that Isaiah is writing about. He's saying, Naphtali and, and Zebulun, you are, you're in darkness, great darkness around the Sea of Galilee. And if you look there, you'll see that, uh, that you have Nazareth, which is where Jesus grew up, and you have Capernaum, which we'll talk about in just a minute, there on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, affliction and anguish, as, as Isaiah reads on, we know that affliction and anguish came to this area of Galilee when the Assyrians came and conquered it and took many captive. And then you get into verse 2 through verse 5, and you have this prophecy of Jesus coming. And listen to these verses 2 through 5. It says, it says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. He's talking about this area around Galilee. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. In verse 4, for the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior is in battle tumult, and, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. And so he's talking about this area, and really interesting to know this is that, that Matthew records these same exact words from Isaiah chapter 9, talking about Jesus and how Jesus fulfilled this promise, this past promise that God gave the people. And so I invite you to turn, if you have your Bibles with you, flip over to Matthew chapter 4. I'll also have that on the screen. But Matthew chapter 4 and verses 12 through 17, here's what it says. Now when he, Jesus, he heard that John, John the baptizer, had had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, that area there, the, the, the area of Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and he lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. There you go. Right back to what Isaiah was talking about. And then here you have the, the, why he did this. So that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled, might come to pass. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, Jesus. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death on them, a light has dawned. And then it tells us from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, change your mind, turn away from this world, and, for, and, and repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so Jesus came, and, and as he came, this was a, a direct fulfillment of that promise that was made so long ago through, through Isaiah that the light would come to the darkness. And, and, and the 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 despised land there. And the reason why this area here was despised is because it was known as the Galilee of the Gentiles because the people dwelling there were a lot of Gentiles dwelling in that area at the time of Jesus. And Jesus came to them for that reason, to bring the good news to them. You know, we, we saw this, that Jesus grew up in Nazareth, 
We learned about that. You know, Jesus grew up in Nazareth, but then he sets up his headquarters, so to speak, in Capernaum. And at Capernaum, actually, I haven't been there, but you go to Capernaum, and I saw this, found this picture, that there's actually a sign in Capernaum that says, Capernaum, the town of Jesus. And it's known as that today because of this, because he went to Galilee, because he was fulfilling what God told everybody in Isaiah. This past promise was fulfilled. And you notice some great words. Did you, not, did you notice these words as we read through Isaiah chapter 9? These words about Jesus? It talks about a great light has shown. You have increased its joy. You have increased its joy as you've been in that area, which was true. When Jesus came on the scene, a light came in the darkness, and people were getting excited, like, oh, he's going to take us out from Roman oppression. They saw a little glimmer of light. And joy came because what did he do? He healed people, right? He healed many. And not only did he heal people, he forgave sins of many. It also goes on to talk about verse 4, you have broken the burden of his yoke. And we just learned about this on, on Friday night that Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come to me. Hitch up to me. And I'll take care of you. I will help you. I will guide you in this life. But here's the thing. When, when Jesus, the promise came to pass, when Jesus came on the scene in Matthew, as we talked about, and it, it was fulfilled, but the people, some of, some of the people believed, absolutely, but there were many more who rejected it. Here was this promise many, many years before in Isaiah that they could have all been reading and learning about and seeing, and they could have realized it. They should have realized that when Jesus came on the scene, he fulfilled that promise. And many did realize it. Many did believe, but there were many more who saw that and, and even possibly understood it and totally rejected it and pushed it away. And we've been talking about them in the Gospel of John, have we not? The Pharisees, here it is, the Messiah, Jesus, he's here, the Savior, and what's their problem? No, we don't want him, he's going he's to make it all bad for us, and we're not going to be popular anymore, we're not going to have the rule anymore, nope, we can't have him. They knew who he was, and they rejected him, and that was the case. And let me just tell you this, you know, how? Whether rejected or received, his promises will always stand. And that's a warning to us today. All the promises we find in Scripture, and we're going to talk about a little bit more here, all these promises that were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and there's hundreds of them, those promises prove that all the other promises for the future, they're going to be fulfilled. They're going to happen. And the warning is this. Whether you reject them today, whether you keep stiff-arming the promises of God today and of Christ, are found in Christ, or whether you receive them, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. They're going to take place. It's going to be fulfilled. And so my encouragement to you today would be receive them already. Stop. This is my heart. This is the heart of all of us on staff here at this church is receive the promises of God through Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's eternal life. That's the big one, but, the, but it's, uh, there's so many more. <laughs> so many more. So please receive the promises of Christ today. Because the promises in the past came about and were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And if that's the case, then we can guarantee that the promises we talk about next here in the present are going to take place, are taking place today. So we have the promises in the present. Here's the next one. And it's really interesting to me that you have this great passage. You have Isaiah 9-6, which is your memory verse for this week and on, the, on the gold card there. And so this this verse has all these names of Jesus. And you know, I, my name is just Joel. That's it, just Joel, okay? My name doesn't have a lot of meaning behind it like Jesus' names had. 
Jesus like had a name and all these names of Jesus have this great deep meaning and deep promise in that meaning. And it's, and it's all spelled out for us right here in Isaiah 9, 6. And these promises, I believe, are for the present right now. Here they are. Verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. And here's his names. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So quickly, I want to remind you today of those four names and the promises that you and I have if we are in Christ today and have fully surrendered our life that we have today and we can claim today. So here they are. First one, wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Paul writes in Romans 11, he says this, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. Amen? Wow. <laughs> How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? His wisdom, his knowledge is so deep. And at the very end, Paul just says, who could be his counselor? Nobody. Nobody. And as I think about wonderful counselor, I think of, you know, the times in my life where I've had some problems. I've had some, some chaos in my life. And I've had to seek counsel. And I'll tell you, the best place that I have found in my life to seek counsel is right in this book. I cannot tell you the many times I could be here all day today sharing with you the times in my life where hard things happen and God pushed me to his word and wow, the depth of his counsel, the wonderfulness of his counsel and how it changed my heart and how it made me more like Christ. He is the wonderful counselor. That's a promise that you can claim today and you can claim by running to his word, running to the resources that God's put in your life that will point you to his word and find counsel there in the midst of the trials of life. The next name that we come across is Mighty God. Mighty God. Uh, this means that all power is given to him. And as I was studying this week and reading it, it came across in one of my readings that even as a baby, get this, even as that little baby in the manger, and you know, we've had kind of not really a baby boom, maybe we can call it that here at church, and it's been cool to see babies, but have you ever been around a baby? It's such a blessing, right? But think about this, Jesus Christ in the form of the baby, here's the thing about him being mighty God. He was holding the universe together in that moment. He was the one that was holding it all together. That little baby. And he still is holding it together today. You know, his perfect plan, which we talked about way back at the beginning of December, is being played out to the letter today. It's being played out to perfection today. Even though to us, and you look around the world, and you look around your own life at times, it's just chaos, it's craziness, it's madness. No! Jesus is working his perfect plan. He's holding it all together. Because he is mighty God. And if he's mighty God, then I can claim that in my life. And what that means for me is I can trust him. I can trust him when the unexpected happens in my life. Because he is mighty God. Mighty God. The next one is Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. And the, the better way to, to, to get a hold of what this is talking about, because you're like, wait a second, Jesus is not the Father, God's the Father. Okay, Jesus is Everlasting Father, and here's what this means. It, it means he's the source of eternity. He's the Father of eternity. He's the source 
of eternity. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 2, it says this, Long ago, at, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Now it's true, we see that in Isaiah. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And I would say now, he's spoken to us by his son because the son is the word. And we have the word and he tells us that here. He's spoken to us by his son. Whom he appointed the heir of all things. And through whom, through Jesus also, he created the world. And that word world would be better translated ages. He created all the ages. The world, everything, all the time he created it all. He is the source of all eternity. And let me remind you all today. Let me remind myself today because I need this reminder today on December 26th. We are created for eternity. We're created for eternity. And, and the, the thing is, though, what we do today with Christ will determine our eternal destiny. Every person in this room has been created for eternity. And what you and I decide today to do with Christ, whether we've come to a point in our life where we've received Christ and the gift of Jesus, the greatest gift ever of salvation through Jesus, or rejected him and pushed him away and stiff-armed him, that's gonna make all the difference for eternity, everybody. And that's what I'm most concerned about in my life. I was just thinking about this yesterday as we were praying before we opened Christmas presents and I got choked up. Imagine that, me get choked up. I got choked up because I was praying for my kids. I was thinking, God, you've saved my kids. I've seen fruit in their life this year. Thank you so much because that's what's most important. That's what matters for all of eternity, what you do with Jesus. Today, because all these promises, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, they're all yours and mine to claim today through Christ. Huh. Amazing. And then, let me remind you of his last name here the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and then Prince of Peace. Peace, and I have four references there for you. Some of them might be familiar to you. And I'm just gonna quickly go through these and remind you of them. So let these just wash over you today and be reminded that peace, true peace, is yours today in Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we've been declared righteous, we've been told not guilty, you're set free in Christ. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. No greater peace is needed than personal peace with God. And that's only found through Jesus. It doesn't change the circumstances in life, but I'll tell you, it sure makes a difference walking through the circumstances of life, doesn't it? Amen? I know it's December 26. Come on. Amen? Amen. I know it, cha it changes everything. It's changed everything in my life. I can walk through nasty, difficult circumstances and have peace because I know I'm good to go with God because not because of who I am and how great I am, because I'm not, but because of Jesus and how he died and shed his own blood for me on the cross when he didn't have to do that. It should have been me. Another verse, John 14, 27. Jesus said this to him. He said to, to the people, Be peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. <laughs> and then I love it. He says, not as the world gives do I give to you. Amen? Because I'll tell you, the peace that I had yesterday for a brief moment lasted a brief moment. <laughs> it wasn't 
a lasting peace. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, this peace that I give to you, that I'm leaving with you, it's not as the world gives to you. It's permanent. Let not your hearts be troubled then, he goes on. Neither let them be afraid. Maybe 2021 didn't live up to the hype. That's okay. If you have peace with God, he says, let your hearts, don't be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid of what 2022 has in store. Because God's given you through Jesus peace, lasting, permanent peace, because he is peace. And that leads me to Ephesians 2, 14. Ephesians 2, 14, Paul says, for he, Jesus, he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. I love that picture. I love that picture because here's the thing. I, when we went to South Africa a couple of years ago, it was great, but they have walls everywhere. They have to because people are always trying to break in and stuff. So there's walls everywhere. But it really kind of was, I didn't really like that. When I got back to America, I was like, wow, there's no wall this is amazing. There's no, I can see my neighbors. Look at that. Hey, neighbor, okay. All that kind of thing. And I love that picture because here's the idea. Because of my sin, I'm walled in on every side because of my sin. When it comes to my relationship with God, it's all, I'm all walled in. That peace is over there. All these promises are over on the other side of this wall and I'm, I'm, I'm built in. And The Bible tells me what Jesus did is he became our peace. He himself is our peace. And he's broken down that wall. He tore down that wall that my sin built. And now I have free access to him. Free, undeserved access. What a promise. What a promise. And peace comes with that. And then the last one, there's many more. I just, you know, encourage you to do a study on peace this week in the Bible. Be great for you. Be great for me. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Be grateful, right, everybody? With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Just give him all your requests. Tell him your heart. And then the great promise is this, because he is the prince of peace and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I've shared this before, but God's just leading me to share it again. I'll never forget laying my little, my, my oldest daughter, who would be the oldest in my family, laying her to rest at the cemetery and, and driving away, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding washed over me, and I will never be able to figure that one out. I remember looking at Stephanie, I said, honey, I don't know what it is right now, but I'm so at peace. Yeah, it hurts, but I'm so thankful, and I'm so looking forward to what God's going to do ahead of me. Because he's my peace. He's the prince of peace. Let me tell you this morning, everybody, these promises that I just listed off for you and we read through about peace, that's just a little handful, a little taste of them. But they're all for the claiming here and now. You know, maybe Christmas wasn't what you wanted it to be this year. Maybe you have to do some returns this afternoon. I don't know. You know, one thing that really upset me was a couple years ago, you know, we do Legos at our house for Christmas. That's our big thing. We love Legos. The 26th of December, the very next day, one year, I got a Lego catalog in the mail for all new sets. My kids and I are looking through like, wow, I want that. What? But let me tell you, here's the thing. Let me tell you, when you and I dive deep into Jesus and into his word, there is an all-satisfying treasure trove of promises to be found and to be claimed. And you can take them every single day to the bank, and they're good all the time. And they're true all the time. 
And in fact, God says in his word that all the promises of him are yes in Jesus Christ. Amen? They're yes. They're not, oh man, that was really disappointing. I want this now. No. It's not that at all. You take time and you meditate on the promises of God, I will tell you, your contentment will go up in your life. Your thankfulness will go up. And the really cool thing is your light will shine bright to others around you who desperately, desperately need it. We have so many promises right now, right here in the present. We had the promises in the past, and many were fulfilled in Jesus. We had the promises right here in the present to be claimed today. And then we have the promises for the future. We have promises for the future. And these promises are, are just awesome, right? You know, I just said at the beginning of this that the, the anticipation for Christmas is greater than the realization. But let me tell you, I think it was Trevor Mears not too long ago who preached up here. He said, no, that's not the case when it comes to the future promises of God. The future promises is the anticipation doesn't even compare to the realization of what's coming. And look what Isaiah says here in verses 6 to 7. I already read 6, but I want to read it again because those promises of who Jesus is, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, they're also for the future. He's the same yesterday, today, and then forever. So here it is. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And notice this next phrase. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice, with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts, he will do this. You hear that? This government... Did you notice that word phrase twice, government? The government will be on Christ and this wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, he will rule once and for all. He is ruling now, he's on the throne, but we haven't seen anything yet. There will be no end to his government and to the peace that will be found. As I was studying and reading, I read, came across this quote from J. Vernon McGee, and he said this, his government, this really got me, his government is not static. Did you notice this? Look at verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. His, there is always, McGee says, there is always increase and growth in his government, in his ruling. It's constantly increasing and growing. I can't imagine that. You know, when he sets up his kingdom and we're in heaven, those of us who have received Christ and fully surrender our lives to him, when we're there, it's going to increase more and more and more and more. McGee goes on to say, he says, no two days will be the same. No two days will be the same when he's reigning. Wow. I would love that. I can't wait. Let me just say this. I'm thankful for the country we live in, but let me tell you, it's not about making America great again. It's about making all things new. That's what God is interested in through Jesus Christ. He's interested in making all things new again, and let me tell you, it will happen. It will happen. My hope is not in this country. My hope is not in the system of this world because honestly, darkness is just gonna come more and more. But my hope is in Jesus who's in the business of making personal lives new and making all things new. Let me remind you today, if you're anything like me, I need this reminder today from Revelation 21. And he, Jesus, who was seated on the throne, said this, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said to John, he said, Write write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. 
And John says, and he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. What promises wrapped up in Jesus, what future promises we have to look forward to if we fully surrender our life to him. But then there's a promise here at the end of this passage. For those of you who are still holding out, for those of you who are like, yeah, I come to church on Sunday, I'm good. No, you haven't fully surrendered your life to Christ, you're not good. In fact, here's the promise. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And when you put those, that whole passage together, it begs the question, are you part of his kingdom today? Have you surrendered your life to him? Because if you haven't, the lake of fire that burns with fire and sulfur, it's your destiny. And it's just as good as a promise as all the other promises of God. And it's one of the promises that motivates me to stand up in front of you and say, today's the day. Today's the day. Lay your heart down. Give it to him. Admit to him that you're a sinner and there's nothing that you can do to build this, to break down this wall of sin around you and to have this relationship with him. There's nothing you can do. It's only because of what Jesus has done on the cross and his resurrection. Today is the day. Because then all those other promises that we've talked about, the promises in the past that have come true in Jesus, the promises that we have in the present that we've talked about, the promises for the future of future heaven, future eternity with God forever is yours for the claiming. So please, today, humble yourself today to the point of believing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to the Father but through him. In the end, there will be only one kingdom to go throughout all eternity, and the only way in is through Jesus. Surrender fully today. And what we learned about on Friday night, Christmas Eve, is Jesus isn't going to come in and push his way through the door and barge his way in. He's standing at the door and he's just knocking. He's knocking. I remember visiting a man in the hospital this last year. Didn't know him at all. Just got a call. I need to go visit him. So I went and visited him. I remember knocking on the door and they opened it to me. And then later that day, Jesus was knocking on his door, and he opened his heart to Jesus. What an amazing, amazing thing that is. If you are a part of the kingdom of God, you know, this is where I find myself. My tendency, unfortunately, is this, to have one foot in this kingdom of this world and one foot in that kingdom, and then really struggle with that, and it's time to stop it. It's time to go all in every day already. And, and we can do this by standing on the promises. I love, I love that old song, standing on the promises. I love that song because here's the thing. It's standing. We're not sitting. We're not leaning like a crutch. No, we're standing on them. They're what support us. There's, they're what holds us up. They're what is our foundation. Promises of God. And let me just tell you, we can stand firm on those promises of Christ, and we can do that. Last year, at the same about time, I, I preached a message and I talked about turning up the word in 2021. And this year, I'm going to say, claim the promises in 2022. And how we do that is by getting into God's word, getting into this awesome book that the more I read it, the more I see, the more treasure I uncover. 
And so as we go in 22, we wanted to equip you with a reading plan. And I'll reading plan. Oh, great, I'll start in January. I'll be done in February. No, I know, it's hard. We can do it, though. We can do it. It's a treasure trove that we get open every day of our lives. And so we have a couple reading plans for you. They're back here at this table and back out at the resource table out in the foyer. And the first one, just real quickly, is... Uh, is uh, the Foundation 260 plan, which last year, like, well, we did that. That's No, that was the New Testament. This one goes through the whole entire Bible, the foundational passages of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Okay? It's out there for you. Then there's also this other one called the Essential 100 plan. And what that is, is 50 Old Testament passages and 50 New Testament passages. And it doesn't take a whole year to go through, but it gets you started, gets you warmed up. Okay, and so you go through those and they're foundational to the faith and they'll be full of promises of God. And so I encourage you, we have those on paper, you can take those. Also, many of you, one of my favorite things is that Bible, Version Bible app. That has been awesome this year to look at you and to see what you've been marking. I just love it more than Facebook, it's the best thing ever, okay? And to see what people are reading. Both those plans are available on that. You can just look them up, the E100 and F260 Bible reading plan. And so look them up on there, find them, get going on them. I want to encourage you this year as we go into 2022, as we go into that time period to stand firm on God's promises. Let's do it. It's our foundation. It's what's going to keep us up this year. It's what's going to keep us being the light that we want to be in the North Polk area. Let me pray. Father God, thank you so much for this passage in Isaiah. Lord, I'm so thankful that all these promises written hundreds of years before Christ came, Lord, they were fulfilled in Christ. And because those promises were fulfilled to the letter in Christ, that all the promises he gave us, and all the promises we have in the word, Lord, they're all true. They're all for our claiming. Lord, I pray for the one in here right now. Lord, I, I just pray, God, that that, that one who, who, who comes to church and is being a good person, Lord, and, and those things, God, I pray that today you would help them to see their need that can't be done by themselves that they need to come to you humbly and admit that they're a sinner, just right where they're sitting, and just tell you that, there's, that they can't do it on their own, they can't have a relationship with you, and to just receive Christ, and to just say to him, come into my life, I need you. I need you to forgive me of my sins, and to save me, to rescue me, Lord, and tear down the wall that I've built. Lord, I pray that that person would do that right now. That your Holy Spirit would work in their heart and have them do that right now, God. And Lord, for those of us who have come to a point in our life where we've done that, where we've fully surrendered our life, God, I pray that you would get the one foot out of this world and get it back on the promises of God so we can stand firm going into 2022, Lord so that we can just see what you're gonna do, Lord, so we can trust you, so we can experience that peace that you promised, Lord, that as circumstances change all around us and the darkness closes in, that we can still live in peace and in light because we have Jesus. And Lord, I pray as we just go about our daily life, Lord, I pray that we would start our day with your word, God, that you would put it in our minds, that you would put it in front of us, and before we turn on Netflix, before we turn on sports, before we turn on any of the noise of this world, God, that we would turn your word on in our lives so that we can stand on the promises. We love you so much. So, so thankful for what you've done through Jesus. It's only because of him I can be here today, God. I love you so, so much. Thank you for loving me and us first. It's in Christ's name I pray, amen.